G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to Pouring Your Heart Out. I'm going to use my favourite mould at the moment. I go through phases. My Cascade mould. And I love it because I can get these metallic tips on the edges. So when I started doing this sort of technique, I was pouring um, metallic resin around and hoping that it would sort of fall down into these little tips here. Um, but I have uh, learned that I can do it an easier way, which guarantees me to have the metallic where I want it. So this is what we're going to do. I have got the Let's Resin metallic powder in silver. And I am going to just put some in these little creases. I'm going to do it sort of away from me like this. That way the powder flicks over the edge and not too much into the middle doesn't matter if some gets in the middle but just for the ease of cleaning um, it's easier if it just goes up like that and I have got my mold sitting on a little trivet just to get it up off the bench just so that it doesn't overheat we get some airflow under there and uh, yeah that's what I'm going to do my first step just like that And then I'm going to do, I thought, you know, what goes nicely with silver? And of course blue goes nicely with silver. And then I needed another colour, so I thought I'll do like a, a reddish tone because then we'll get a purple because blue and purple make, uh, sorry, blue and red make purple. So I thought they would look nice. So yeah, that's what I'm doing today. I'll do this first and I haven't mixed my resin yet. I'm going to try, now that the weather's starting to warm up, I'm going to try not waiting with my resin because you know how when I'm doing my, my fairy flowers, I wait about 15 minutes before I decant my resin to do my fairy flower. And I thought I'm just going to see what happens if I don't wait. Um, yeah, because the weather's getting warmer, the resin's getting thicker and hopefully, hopefully it'll work without me having to to wait so it could be a big flop my white dots could all just fall straight through because the resin's not thick enough to hold the weight of the white paste I'm not sure yet but we'll see we'll see and I've still got some art pro left as well so I wouldn't mind trying that as well and seeing how that goes now that we're in the warmer weather um, oh, another little bit just there just there. All right, so that's it. That's done with my silver. That's it there. And then I just wipe my brush off. And then what I like to do is just get my baby wipe and basically just go in between like that with my little wipe because sometimes the brush has just sort of gone up the in the middle there where I don't really want the color so I'll just go over with my wipe uh, and that keeps the color in the little crevice instead of on the top actually that can go <laughs> oh, I'm making a bit of a mess All right clean up the mold uh, and then go and mix up my resin so that's what I'll do and then I will come back to you once I'm ready to pour. All right. Oh, <clears throat> I'll tell you about this as well. You know how sometimes I have leftover resin and I make my little my little dots, my leftover resin. So I thought I'd try one of those. If you get one that's a little bit wobbly like that, you can always get your little snippers and you can just trim that so that it's back into a, a circle shape see no reason why you can't just give it a bit of a, a haircut a bit of a trim um, so that then you can use it in in the center of your piece I'm not using this one today but I just wanted to show you you know if it doesn't dry totally round you can do that um, <coughs> drop little bits in there <laughs> I'm yeah that's my little trivet. Um, so today I thought I'd use this this one here um, because it's got blue in it. So 
thought that would look nice. So the top where you've poured, it's always got a curve on it. So it's a good idea to use the bottom, which is flat, and you stick that down, okay? Like so. But again, if you need to trim it up, you can trim it up if you need to. All right, so that's going to sit there. Got a whole heap left over. <laughs> Make sure it's in the middle, okay? Make sure it's in the middle before you start. Give it a bit of a push down. Hopefully it'll stick. All right, that's me done for now. Um, I'll be back in a tick. Righto, I have mixed up my resin. And like I said, I've got my Bloom white pigment paste in here. Um, it's still a little bit transparent. You can sort of see through the stick there if you tilt it. So that's going to be for my dotting. Now today I am going to do a cross between a fairy flower and a dragon flower. So the fairy flower is made with the dots. The dragon flower is made with the M's. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, stay tuned. <laughs> I'll show you. And um, yeah, I'm going to do a combination of both of those today. And uh, see what we get. Once you've done the course from resincourses.com, which I will link for you down below, and you know you know what resin to use and how much of everything to use because um, they tell you these things, um, then you know it opens up a world of just spilt something in there. Opens up a world of new creations that you can take that original recipe and and play with it. So in here I've got my blue and I'm using Jeans by Octopus Fluids. It's a resin ink, not an alcohol ink. Alcohol inks don't seem to be strong enough. And then my red one is Sweet Cherry. Um, and then in my push, my clear that I've got left here, I'm going to add a little bit of jeans. We'll see what that looks like. Just add that in there. So I haven't put my resin in the vacuum chamber. I just stirred it really gently for four minutes. That's quite dark, isn't it? Oh, that'll do. Still, <laughs> look at that. You can't even see it on there, but when it's in the cup, it looks quite dark. Um, so yeah, I haven't put it in the vacuum chamber. I just stirred it gently for four minutes, decanted it into my little cups, and started the video. So that's all I've done. I'll leave that there. So hopefully this will stay where it's supposed to stay. So I'm just going to do a really easy pour for you. I'm just going to do some puddles. We'll start with the blue. Hopefully it's not too dark. Uh, after I put the drops in, I thought, oh, hope it's not too dark. But then when you put your white dots in, because, you know, white makes things lighter, it'll probably make it maybe, I don't know. I don't know whether we're going to pale blue or what we'll get, but anyway. There's that one, um, and then I'm going to, there's a bubble come up underneath that. Hopefully that doesn't mean I've got resin underneath it. Get down there. A little bit maybe, just on the edge. All right, and now my sweet cherry on top, like so. Oh, it does look very dark. Oh, well, tis only resin. We can do it again. It doesn't work, can't we? It's fun to try and experiment. It is. All right, so that's that one. Is that something in there? All right, so now that that's done, that can wait for a minute. Um, I can put that away and get out my little bit of paper towel. And my scissors. Not feeling warm at all. <laughs> Normally, you know, when I'm doing the other technique, I, after I've waited 15 or 20 minutes before I start piping, um, it's quite warm. Now, because it's going to be thin, thinner, I'm going to snip a smaller piece off and then just test it. Do a little, do a little drop, see what you think. All right, now. Um, I am basically just going to do what I would normally do with the fairy flower, and that is lots of little drops. 
My bins have been emptied. <laughs> it's, it was bin night last night. So around we go. Feel free to fast forward if you don't want to watch me doing drops. It's a bit difficult for me to stop and then um, start again and then fast forward and it's just easier like this. <laughs> so yeah, if you don't want to watch, if you know what I'm doing, fast forward. So this, <laughs> it's a very noisy household this morning. Um, so this is just how you do the fairy flower. Lots of little dots like this. Um, and they're starting to move already from the outside in, which is great. Hopefully they're not going to sink. Goodbye truck, thank you, but goodbye. <laughs> I've got my door open because it's a lovely morning. <clears throat> lovely spring morning, the birds are chirping. Dogs are barking. <laughs> Maybe I should have shut my, my internal door to the dog room. All right, around we go. Hope I've got enough white actually to do what I wanted to do because I want to do the dots and then I want to do a push with probably maybe two thirds of what I've got there. And then I want to come back in and do um, some M's around the outside. So I just have to make sure that I've got enough to go around. I should do because normally when I do a fairy flower, and it's been a long time since I've done a fairy flower, but normally when I go and do a fairy flower, I do all my dots and then I go back and then I fill in, you know, the gaps with more dots. So instead of doing that today, I'm going to just, um, like, do a, do a double fairy flower, I guess you could call it. But tell you, like I said, once you know the recipe and how much of everything to use and the right resin to use and everything, you can just create a myriad of beautiful flowers using the same theory recipe. And it's a lot of fun to experiment. I think so anyway. I would just do one, you know, at a time, just until you work out what you're doing and you're getting it right. Just do one piece at a time. I'll leave a little, oh, it doesn't matter. I was going to say I'll leave a little gap, but <laughs> there we go. All right, so that's, and I've still got probably half my white still left. So let's just, oh, it's looking pretty. That the blue doesn't all take over. Now I'm worried that I've got a blue push as well, but <sighs> never mind. All right, so I want to use about, two-thirds of this I guess not all of it yeah, that's about right there's about a centimeter left in the bottom there okay now I'm going to do some more dots wind that back up you can see where the dots have sort of stopped there so we'll start from here again it is still closing as if I'm going the other way this time. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going counterclockwise. Did I go clockwise the last time? I can't remember. Okay, so I'm hoping that by not waiting this time, everything will kind of close on its own without me having to syringe the middle out. But we shall see. I'm not sure. Another little row, so I can see little gaps there. And then once I've done this, I'm going to do some M's around the outside. Um, and that is to basically push all this white into the middle. That's my theory anyway, that's my theory. All right, let's do this. Now we'll go, hopefully it's going to push everything forward looks as if it is need to wind that back up again don't lose too much of it when you push the white resin forward you don't want to push it all out okay so that's that done now I've got a tiny bit left and I'm just going to go back in and put some more dots in basically 
and use up all my white just where I can see little areas that maybe need a bit more another little dot so I'm hoping this will close up okay Try and get between the two dots that you've already done rather than, you know, straight in front of it just so that it's off centre. Creates a prettier petal for you. But not always possible. A tiny bit left. Okay, I think that's about it. I think I've got three rows there, haven't I? And just basically finishing off what's in my bag. Hopefully these middle ones aren't going to sink too much. See, the thing with this sort of technique, uh, as well as the 3D bloom, you don't want your white sinking. You want your white floating and pushing its way in so the resin from the outside can easily move from the outside in the resin and and float and spread the resin that's already in the middle these guys they're not really gonna they're not gonna float and spread okay but I am going to I've got the rest of my little push here and I'm going to just use that and hopefully push all this out and then oh gosh it dripped and hopefully that'll work all right there we go totally empty <laughs> totally empty <laughs> wasn't much white in there like less than an ounce not not a lot not a lot quick little torch all right, now the rest of this, um, I'm just going to pour in there into the center. And then that's, that's pretty much it. That's all I'm gonna do. There isn't any more. <laughs> so that's, oh, there's a tiny bit in there, but I'm not gonna scrape it out. That'll do, that will do. Now we just need to wait and see what happens. Normally I would wait, say, 15 minutes or so, come back and have a look, um, and then syringe the centre out. Um, and I still, I still may have to do that, but we'll leave it like that and, and just see what happens, okay? So we'll come back in a little while. Crocodile. Don't torch too much because it'll make your white sink. Okay, don't don't do that. Just a tiny little torch, just to get the bubbles out. Um, all right, so I'm going to set my timer, and I'm going to come back and check on check on it in about 15 minutes or so, and see if it's closed up sufficiently for my liking. <laughs> all righty, let's go down for a little bit of a close up. Bit concerned that I'm just gonna have blue and purple we're gonna lose all the pink but anyway anyway look at them look at them bloom my edges are blooming so pretty all right see you soon so it's been 15 minutes and it hasn't it hasn't closed over I can still see the white mold there so I'm going to get my little syringe and suck some out. I did think that with the resin a bit thinner, um, you know, me not waiting to pour, that it might close up on its own, but I guess not. Don't know why. <laughs> it's resin. It does what it wants to do. All right. It's my little cup of goodies. Now, I do have to be careful not to suck that little disc out. That's the only thing. So I'm going to have to just go from not too far down. And you can see that's just all clear. All clear. So we'll keep doing that. 
until we get some of the white coming in. And that one's all clear as well. So that's two. Maybe I need to try this again with my usual way of pouring, you know, let the let the resin thicken. All right, so now there we've got some pink and we've got a bit of white in there. So not a lot of white though. I'm just going to go another one or a half of one and just see another half of one. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit more white into that. So I'll leave that. So it was three and a half. You could if you don't want to waste your resin that you've taken out, you know, put it into a little cup, add a bit of glitter or something and make a make a little pendant out of it. Now this is isopropyl alcohol in here. I'm just gonna clean my syringe up and down, up and down, clean it out. And you also need to take that plunger right out, give it a rinse, a bit of a wipe, and then back in and it should move a bit easier for you. Okay, so that's it. I'll just leave a little bit in there, put it aside for the next time. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Because, yeah, normally I, I, I do wait for it to thicken. So, cross fingers. We'll see what happens. If it doesn't work, uh, I'll just do it again. And wait my normal time. So, yep, I'll see you in a few hours. Once this has had a chance to cure. And we'll see if it's worked. But um, I'm not, not really that positive about it. Can't see what's going on anymore. <laughs> I've closed it up. All right, see you soon. Righto, it is unmolding time, the best part of the day. Look at that. Can't see anything in there. It's all closed up. I can see a little bit of silver sprinkled on the side, on the top there. Yeah, I'm not sure, you guys. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. All right. Are we ready? I hope it's worked. Here we go. Are you ready? I know we'll have little silver tips, but I don't know whether we'll have pretty flowers because my resin was pretty thin. Oh, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I know, let's do it. Let's just do it. Oh, it did work. Look at the silver. Wow. It's very blue. I did lose most of that red. Probably should have chosen a like a red center rather than a blue center. But I was thinking that I was going to have a big amount of red in the middle, a little bit of blue on the outside, so I'd need the blue center. That's really quite nice. My gosh, I can't get over how shiny that silver edge is. Wow. Oh my gosh, what a relief. I was really worried that it wasn't going to work. Oh my gosh it's so pretty all right let's go for a little walk around the studio and look at it in different lights shall we why not let's zoom in a little bit so I haven't got a lot of the red purpley tone little bit this, the center stayed nice, didn't it? It's pretty. We've got our petals. All right, we'll go up here away from the bright lights. So you can't really see much purple. Red's kind of stayed red. And the blue's kind of stayed blue. It hasn't really blended all that much, has it? But anyway, you let me know what you think of it. I can't get over that shine of the silver. Oh, actually, maybe I should have put silver in the middle. What do you think? Maybe. 
Maybe a better option would have been the silver, hey? I didn't think of that. I just knew that I wanted little silver tips. Righty-o. Well, I'm happy with that. Let's look at it over here. On this side of the table. Opposite side of the table to where I'm working. Oh, gosh. All right. There you go. We'll go back around the other side. Hope you really enjoyed this video. And, um, yeah, little trick for you. Little trick just for the silver. Little silver edges, hey? If you're wanting something different in those, pretty easy to do, I think. Came out really nice. Happy with it. Alrighty. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, I'll see you all again real soon for the next video. So, see you then. Bye for now.